Welcome to the Think It Isn't Until It Is podcast. I'm Finn. I'm Tim. I'm Guy. This is season two in which we discuss the various moving parts in a life in music. Next episode of season two is The Power of No. Yeah. No. 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 So we'll see you next week. Thanks a lot. <laughs> I <won't laughs> no, I don't want to do I another fucking to do podcast. Um, um, the so power of no. Yeah, this is, this is your idea to do this. What, what, what made you think of this particularly? Because I do a bit of artist development. I do a bit of mentorship mm. and stuff. And a lot of artists, you have kind of two extremes, don't you? You have the artists that just say, yes, I'll do everything that my manager and label and everybody wants me to do. Mm. And you have the artist that goes, no, I'm not going to do anything. I'm just going to do what I want. You know, maybe the obvious way to think about it is, well, you know, somewhere in the middle is the right answer. But actually, it can be healthier for the artist in many ways artistically to be able to say no to things that they think is going to drain their energy or take away from the show. Like if you've got a tough gig on a Wednesday night in, 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 you know, Hamburg or something and you've got to do three radio um, interviews, an online session and an acoustic filmed session and then you got to go to sound check and then you got to do a fan meet and greet and, a, and, a, and an online interview and a Zoom call and then you got to do the gig. That's, that's a different day yeah. to no, I'm just going to do the gig and the people who come to the gig are going to get my full energy bank and my full attention. Mm. But it's also the power of no is also useful... Because a no is often as useful as a yes. So the power of no can also leak into like songwriting and recording. Almost every aspect of what we do is a kind of a yes, no type of a situation. Yeah. So I thought it was like an important topic, for, especially for younger artists to be right. able to navigate when is no okay? When is it okay to say no? Mm. And, and when should you say yes? And things like that. That's why I brought it to the table. Because you're right in that when you start, particularly when you start off, if you've been like a, a kind of unsigned artist for, for many years, you're so desperate to be in a position mm. to say yes to things. It's such a kind of novelty to go, oh, I'm, I'm being offered something. Wow. Yeah. Yes, I would love to do that. And then after a while, you kind of think, well, I don't have to say yes to absolutely everything. But it's very tempting to say yes, especially if you've got a kind of manager who's like, this is a great opportunity. This is a great opportunity. Well, everything's you know. a great opportunity, isn't it? You know, you don't know it, who's listening. Yeah. You don't know which sessions are important when mm. you go to Denmark or when you go to Greece. You know, you, yeah. it's not like if you if you grow up in the UK and you say, oh, you've got a Made of Ale session. Obviously, you're going to bend over backwards to do it. Yeah. Even if it's even if you know doing the Made of Ale session, it'd be more useful if you got a Radio Two play than than the Made yeah. of Ale session. But it's kind of like. In the early days, in a way, maybe you should just say yes to everything. Just mm. do everything. You've got the energy. You've got the juice. And it is yeah. a pleasure to be asked. It's flattering that people want you to come in. And then at least you've tried it as well. I think I think a lot of bands do everything at the beginning, and then they slowly work out which, which they like. Mm. That's a bit basic, but because you should always have an eye on what should I do mm. you know what what if you even get the choice of do you want to do this or not then I remember that um in stores I always found horrible I don't think any band really likes doing in stores yeah. some do yeah. I suppose but um, it depends on the in I mean rough trade just, it's, it's, a, it's a gig in a shop I mean let's mm. be honest it's not yeah. like, not a gig in a venue or even a gig in a bar mm. it's a gig in a store they're pretty dry it's middle of the day the lights are on the tills are ringing yeah. for other people's music. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. Um, even Rough Trade, which has got a great kudos about it, yeah. that's all still a rough gig. So I remember I did a bunch of in-stores and then I kind of said no. But I also, when we were building up in the early days, our sync contacts in LA, I would do every lunchtime cafe gig or like, mm. um, you know, uh, go to their office and, you know, sit on a table and play them three or four tracks. In that, those kind of gigs. Those are really, really tough, horrible yeah, moments. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, and They're I, useful, those, though, aren't they? They, 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 led, they, they unquestionably led to a hundred sinks. Yeah. <laughs> you know? yeah. There's yeah. No, no doubt about it. And I said yes because I wanted the sinks and I got it. If I go there, I can see how someone might see me and go oh wow he looks terrible he could do us some money i'll put him in the next csi miami <laughs> or whatever it is yeah. you know plan. um and so 
but maybe I would be less inclined to do it now um, unless it was, of course, kind of, uh, you know, Disney want you to do a, a quick yeah. gig in the cafe and you think, oh, Disney, okay. Yeah, that, sure. That, that, that might be nice. Write a song for the next Frozen 3 mm-hmm. or something. Yeah. I'm, you know, I'm, 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 my ego is in a much more be- balanced place now. I could, I, could, I could definitely see the way through. But I think the power of no... Well, I learned the power of no from another artist. Right, who because was that? At the beginning, in 2006, seven, and eight, um, we would just do everything. We did every radio session yeah. we were asked to do. Every, you guys did an entire We did a whole tour. FNAC tour in yeah, France yeah. where in, we did a whole two tour. weeks of yeah. in-stores, you know, yeah. in FNAC for the racking. So yeah. we did that because it, FNAC would rack the record if we did the in-store. Mm-hmm. So that means the shop would definitely buy 50 copies just to fill the racks for your in-store. Now, what we didn't get told is we can, they're going to send you 48 of them back when they don't sell them. You know, I mean, that's a bit of an exaggeration, 45. But, um, <laughs> you know, it meant that our pre-sales were higher because we did the FNAC tour. We, we sold into France an extra 700 copies on vinyl. It looked good. So we charted, yeah. I think. That yeah, week. yeah, yeah. But, uh, um, it did wonders for um, our touring in France as well. Yeah, a lot of people saw us on that FNAC yeah. tour because we were playing at lunchtime. Yeah. So they'd have a lunch break. I remember Montpellier, there was a bunch of students that were on a lunch break from lectures that just wandered oh, in. Really? And it was like, this is cool. It's free oh, as well. That's great. Yeah, yeah cool. So, um, uh, but I was getting pretty ragged with all the yeses and really getting knackered on the tours and re- starting to realize, uh, you know, I do need a bit of juice left in the tank at nine when I hit the stage. If I've just been singing and playing and sessioning and being nice to mm. everybody for six hours before that I'm, I'm 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 almost on, on empty when i hit the stage yeah when i need to be extra on and nice you know sure. to myself as well but we did a tour in 2009 where we had ben howard on support and this tour had a massive impression on me for, for lots of reasons firstly because ben wasn't signed yet mm. he wasn't signed to ireland at this point he hadn't even he had one ep that Two Pines EP or something yeah. like that, and um, and he was awesome every night. Apps his his half hour acoustic set was absolutely absolutely kick ass, yeah, and and I was true. a big big fan. And I just thought, wow, this kid is like the, the absolute bee's knees. I think he's I think he's great. And he was managed by his mate, still is mm. Owen. Yeah, and Owen's got like no experience of management before, and Ben has no experience of being a massive star before, and yet they navigated through that process to be signed to you know, fucking universal Mm. and do whatever they want and make records to make it however they want. And it all worked out very well. Yes. And I, and and I learned from Ben because he, he would say no to pretty much everything from the get go. Really? Apart from the, do you want to do Jules Holland? That's a yes. Do you want to do made a veil session for, for, for Zane? Mm. uh, That's a yes. But like all the, all the random little fight up yeah doing all those tiny little things i just noticed that he just said no to a lot of them mm, right and i realized that in ben really taught me the power of no by proxy because i was i was doing everything and saying yes to everything and ben was just saying no to everything right. and i just thought well yeah you can say no. it yeah. didn't it, it didn't have any effect on the outcome yeah was sure what i learned there yeah you know and he carried that through with him as well because after that album after that first album i mean this is another sort of no in a way yeah he refused Number one, he refused to make that album again, you know, in the kind of yeah. typical way of like you have to make a similar album. And the record company I totally could have done the as record, well. Yeah, the record yeah. company must have been crying out for it. Like, oh, yeah, that would be brilliant, you know. Yeah. So he made a totally different type of album. And he also, I think controversially, stopped playing almost all of the songs from the first album. Yeah, I saw him at Bri- I saw him at Bri- doing a double Brixton Academy on yeah. that second album yeah. and he didn't play a single track from the first album and every yeah. all the kids that were there were there to see love 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 and all of his hits and true, wolves and true, all this yeah. stuff and it was like no and then an encore which came i around. think is going too far personally but that's me you can do a bit of that i mean you know horses for courses horses, i think yeah, true. i think you know it i mean it's getting quite specific now but with in ben's case his first album was so wildly popular mm. and instantaneously enormous in yeah. the uk that he probably did feel very much, I don't know how he felt, but probably very scared that this is me, but it's actually not me. This is me now writing these songs and I felt that then and now I'm all moody and dark and deep and weird and I feel that now and I can't sing love, love, love when I want to sing, you know, Berg Island and stuff like that. So, yeah, that's exactly another another power of no, as in, no, I'm not going to play the last album. I'm I'm touring this album Mm. and that's what I'm going to do. Yeah. 
and like you say, maybe as an encore, or uh, maybe in the middle of the set, you might drop in, uh, I, you know, you're all here for this one, here's Only a version, love. or here's yeah. a different version of this track, yes. or uh, I'm going to, don't worry, I'm going to give you the single as the encore kind yeah, of thing, which yeah. is maybe a more traditional approach. Yeah. Right? But you're still, you are saying no in a way. Because you're you, you cultivating your own self as well. You're working out what you're, you're sculpting what you want to be going forward. You're not yeah. going to be dictated by what what you were previously so i've made actually a little list of ah list. great list. great i, I love I'm, his I'm, list. I like my list great noahs in music great noahs um, okay so noah in the whale this noah cyrus noah in the whale. yeah just this particular um topic <laughs> is, noah so radiohead when they um i ought to I ought to announce that there's a packet of mini eggs on yeah, the table. Yeah, Guy, stop, stop it with your mini eggs. And, Take them away. And Guy wants Terrible them. Snack. You can see the whole way through he's been wanting to have some. So he's eating one now. Um, anyway, so Radiohead had a massive, massive hit on their first album. I right. think it might have been their second single, right. which was Creep. Right. Okay, mm. Big hit in America, then became a big hit in Britain and everywhere else. Yeah. So they were very much like dictated, well, or they could have been. Um, they could have had their career dictated to them by that massive hit, you know, because the record company was saying, right, you've got to go into the studio for your second album and make 12 creeps yeah, yeah, and 12 then we'll be, you know, over the moon. And they said, no, we're going to do something completely different. We're going to, like, follow our instincts, make something much darker, much more gnarly. And it was a great success. And then because that was a great success... There, there was obviously like an avalanche of interview requests and all of all of that sort of thing. So for OK Computer, I don't think they did any interviews. Mm. Tom York certainly didn't do any interviews. And then when they released Kid A, they refused to release any singles. I mean, do you think that was... Um, this episode isn't psychoanalyzing Radiohead. Uh, it's not the title of this episode. But do you think that they, in some way... We now know them as a very purist musical yeah. outfit, and maybe they saw their first album, and they all, all they all they saw was all the compromises they had to make to make it. Yeah, and so therefore they wanted to they they immediately wanted to distance themselves from these people that they had to be, but actually they're not. They were kind of forced into that box. Like Creep, from what I understand, saved their ass. Yeah. They were definitely on the on the on the on the we're going to drop you next yeah, cycle yeah, yeah. heap. Definitely. And then Creep became a surprise American monster, yeah. which then got re-exported, and then it gave them the power of no. Mm -hmm. Because before mm -hmm. that, they were just another indie band signed to Polymer Records, and yeah. you do what we tell you, and you'll be rich and famous. Yeah. And maybe they subscribed to that first album, like all the other indie bands, mm -hmm. and then they got Creep was so big that yeah. they suddenly had all this. They had the power of we've recouped. We know you want us. We've got a massive fan base. So actually, we don't need to do what you want us to do. We don't need to have a band photo where we're all smiling or, yeah. or reinforcing any stereotypes you want us to sell. Well, from what I can gather, it was very much a decision to take back control. And that sounds like a political statement. To actually say, right, we want to be in control of what we're doing. So we're going to, we're going to use no as the method of being in control of what we're doing. And, um, I think it's a great example. And I think they, they used, they always say that they used the example of Massive Attack, who, again, you know, it helped that they weren't in London as well, and Massive Attack were in Bristol. So yep. it wasn't like they were sort of part you, of the machine. You know, part of the machine. Yep. So they could be, you know, for want of a better word, mysterious. You know, we're going we're gonna to just say yes to these things that we think are specifically to do with us and what we want to look like going forward yeah and then they cultivated this image and the weird thing is that for radiohead i think it went slightly too far in that they became known as this kind of moody band yeah moody art band um yeah. and in fact they're, they're not at all they're not at all you know no. so um anyway radiohead were the first example There's that's another... a great example of yeah. the power of no i mean you just made me think of Zep, who never put singles out, right? No, never put so, singles. So th I suppose that's a power of no as well. Yeah. I said, no, there's going to be no singles because we're Absolutely. not a singles we're band. We're not a singles band, yeah. Um, and, and also it's like having, I guess, having the confidence of knowing we are good enough to be successful without having singles. So I suppose the power of no helps you to not compromise. Yeah. Compromise is essential to us, to society functioning, mm. of course, but like it's when you're a young artist and you're starting out, you're not aware mm. of A, that you have any power at all, and B, that you're allowed to say no to yeah. anything. It's really 
kind of drilled into you, I think, that um, you we know better and we're going to tell you what to do. And if you do what we tell you, you're going to get what you want. Yes. And if you don't do what we tell you, oh, dear, well, it might all be over. You might yeah, not even yeah. get to the next record. Also, the industry is different now. There are no rules. Mm -hmm. It's like the route to success is not so prescribed as it used to be. Yeah, we're talking about a, a indie band in the '90s or a rock band in the in the in the late '60s, early '70s, mm. and 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 it's a different industry now. Yeah, yeah. The kids that I teach at college sometimes, you know, that one of the questions is, you know, like how, how do I? I've got all these songs, and and what do I what what do I do? How do I do it? And and I would have said in the past, oh, you do loads of gigs, and you get signed, and then yeah. you get a manager, and then it didn't all. But now it's like I don't know. I don't know. Maybe you no, put them exactly. on Spotify, and well, I don't know. this is it. A dec is is a decent video on YouTube or TikTok or wherever. Is that worth a, yeah, a thousand gigs? Well, you know, it might be. You know, nowadays. I mean, literally. That's another power of no option where it's kind of like, oh, you need to make three videos and it's going to cost you 50 grand. Yes. You go, well, I could spend 50 grand tour supporting myself and I could do, I could tour every single venue in Europe like mm. that. Or I could do three videos, which will inevitably be three cheap videos instead yeah. of one amazingly expensive video. Yeah. And it will nail you to a moment in time, even if you try really hard to be timeless and yeah. out of the loop, you're still going to be. You know, we've all seen videos from the 90s or, or, or like, you know, you go and see like shoegaze videos or rave videos. They're so of the moment. Yeah. They don't last very long. The record companies don't mind spending money because they're going to get it back. You know, whatever. It doesn't matter. Yeah. But they, they, they are spending your money mm -hmm. and you've got to earn it back the hard way, you know, by either gigs or selling records, you know, one by one. It's a long way back up. And if, yeah. if you borrow too much money to make videos because the label says you should. Well, if your heart says, I don't really need the videos, though, they're not yeah. really, I'm not really doing anything for me. You should say no. Yeah. Save yeah. the money. Yeah. I mean, it's actually, I was thinking earlier when you mentioned about, um, you know, meeting your sync agents, that syncs is another massive question of the power of no, because mm -hmm. a lot of young artists wouldn't, might not be aware even of um, their, what, what I think is called moral rights, whereby, you know, so if somebody wants to use your music for whatever TV show they want, there should be a process of consultation there, and it might be up to you whether you decide you want to be associated with something or not. Well, yes, I mean, I've got a de one of my deals in the States... Uh, involves a catalog that I'm very sensitive with a bunch of songs I wrote for another artist and they don't have to ask me permission to place it right and they placed it that something happened recently where it's Amy Winehouse and, and there's a book a, a really horrific book released of her life in pictures something she would absolutely detest and in there was a couple of lyric sheets from my studio when we worked together and so I immediately went hit the roof went batshit crazy and called them up and said what are you doing licensing this stuff to the to the it says by kind permission of finn green i didn't yeah. give permission they're like we don't have to ask you it's in your deal and it's like clause 17a we can just wow. do what we want with it it's the deal didn't you uh, say your handwriting is in the book? oh yeah all that yeah my mum was really proud so. <laughs> and, and why not we were in a bookshop and there it was but yeah you're right, Guy. You know, we've had other bands who we won't name as friends mm. who signed massive publishing deals and said no to everything. Sure. Yeah. Because they didn't want their music associated with product or associated with scenes. Mm. And in our case, whenever we get um, a sync opportunity, uh, Ninja Tune are a very cool independent label. So they do always send you the synopsis and the scene and where where it's being made and what, what the background mm, is, just in yeah. case it's something you're not comfortable with. Generally speaking, we're comfortable with it. Although when we got the um, Better Call Saul license, I had to have the entire episode redacted because I was watching it at the time. <laughs> and so I was watching Better Call Saul and I was utterly wrapped by this show. And then this was for like episode eight and I was uh, I only up to episode three or something. Really? And, I, and I, So they redacted <laughs> it like it. some kind of top secret document. So right, it was kind of right. like blank says blank and then blank, blank, blank to the blank. And I'm like, yep, <laughs> sounds great. <laughs> Put it in there. Because I was like, don't tell me, don't tell me, don't tell me. Uh, that's, that's absolutely brilliant. Um, but... Um, I don't think we've... I say no to syncs where I think our music is undervalued. I said right. no to one yesterday. Right. Where it's not a money grab. It's like the, the fee that they were asking for the track um, for this TV show. I thought it's that's not that's, that's doing the song a bit of a disservice to, to mm. sell that, to right. give you that for the life of copyright and 25 years or whatever it is. I don't think I've ever said... I haven't. We've never had any TV ads. 
right. that really to speak of. We we took one TV ad in the early days, and we just took it because we needed the money. Ma- yeah, Mastercard, yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. yeah, and we needed exactly. that 2007 Mastercard ad, and we really needed that. And they got advertising rights, BA flight rights. They got the for like 15 grand or something. Yeah. It was an obscene deal, yeah. really disgusting deal. But we really needed the money, yeah. and it paid for like the tour support gap that would build up on yeah. biscuits, and it made us feel nice. And, um, it was significant. Yeah, I mean, it moved the needle for us. Definitely. Yeah. But yeah. Um, apart from a major bank, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I don't know where we would draw the line with. I've yeah. got, I've got. Remember, we had that discussion with Flood in the studio. Uh-huh. What's your number? Oh yeah, yeah, because yeah. Because what's your number can break the power of no. Mm. Flood, I said to Flood, you know, I've got a number. Mm-hmm. Like, say, I wouldn't play in the middle. I wouldn't play in Dubai or Saudi or something. Yes. You know, for for, for personal, um, you know, um, political reasons. But if if a massive music festival in Saudi Arabia said. Oh, but we really, really, really want your brand of moody, yearning, loss songwriting on yeah. our festival. We're going to be on before Dua Lipa and after, you know, <laughs> I don't know, that booty shaking other one. Yeah. The number is half a million euros. Right. Now, my wife would probably string me up if I didn't take that. Oh, yeah. Because it's like, you're going to have to like hold your nose, do it. Yeah, yeah. But that's a life changing amount of money, you know? Yeah. It's an apartment or something. Yeah, yeah. So let's say my number for completely selling my soul and pulling my pants down and just 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 mm-hmm. doing it, I put it at about half a million. Right. If anyone's listening, it's half a million. <laughs> um, and as in Flood at the time had been approached by a massive band, yes, the band that he hates I the know, most. Right, know, we, yeah, we know. know who it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and uh, and and they were like, you know, can you can you produce our next record? And he's like, no you know you're fucking rubbish and then we're like yeah but flood i mean one you'd make yeah. a great record with this band sure. you could really change their musical mm, lives definitely. but but you must have a even flood has a number right you know? i mean when flood talked about going around to brian eno's house and there's like a picasso in the lobby yeah, yeah, it's yeah, like yeah. you know sure i mean i think flood's got a warhol in his lobby but uh, it's like yeah picasso's a nice upgrade so did, did, did flood have a number he then? did have a number oh uh, really 100 million <laughs> <laughs> it's just comedy 100 million 100 million and he thought about uh, it he's like it. Mm, yeah let me think about that yeah 100 million, 100 million. pounds wow, wow. Yeah. Still, pounds i love it which just means a... he's probably not going to be producing that band yeah, anytime yeah. Sure. soon i'd say yeah. so but um what, i mean about know mr t's number what's your number what's your number to do something what, what is is there something you wouldn't do um well, yeah, I mean, I was thinking about this recently. Um, what num the number that would would get me out of pull me out of dodge? Yeah, right now, if you, in a way. no, not the number that would pull you out of dodge. The number that yes. Yeah, yeah, so no, I mean, luxury, I would, I would desperately like life changing. What? Where would you well, go? And what would you go and play? Uh, you know, a you know let, 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 let's see. Let's see. There's an awful dictator, and mm-hmm. he's having a birthday party. Yeah, Jamiroquai is obviously, play, obviously yeah. playing it because he plays every, all of them, and um, and and yeah, and it's a terrible dictator who's just done massive genocide and awful shit. And you're like, yeah. no, but, right. he says, here's a blank check. What's the number you? Well, write? that would be very, very, very difficult, wouldn't it? Why not? Yeah, very difficult. I mean, the power of no. I saw that also with um, Amy Winehouse's career. Yeah. Because she did not have any power until she released Back to Black, and then she had all the power. All the power it was yeah. literally fr- it was a binary. It was from naught to one. And you can see the front cover of her first album. She's wearing a little dress, and she's got a little dog, and she's walking down the street. And we all know that's not Amy Winehouse. Right. So there's been a compromise that's been made there. We want your album to have a pink mm. lettering and we want you in a little dress going down the street like sort of Joss Stone, but, you know, a bit bit urban or something. Yeah. And you think, oh, this isn't the Amy Winehouse we come to know in Back to Black, which is like, yep, tattoos and beehives and Mark Ronson and so on. Mm, mm. But as soon as she had enough power to be able to say, and I maybe I think maybe a solo female pop artist is maybe the most vulnerable right. when it comes to being able to exercise the power of no. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, um, on their way up, yeah, yeah, you know, sure. it's kind of like I think after Back to Black, um, not only was she not only was she vindicated after that by saying no to everything, mm. apart from the stuff that, that she said yes to, of course, but she could suddenly do what she wanted to do, yes, as opposed to what she what people told her that she should do. Yeah. Okay, in her case, sadly, some of those decisions there could have been some professional interventions along the way that would mean that there's four or five Amy Winehouse albums yeah. now. Yeah, that might have helped. But um. I think a really interesting example of someone really successfully doing that is Kate Bush. Right. Because she was the young, very, very young yeah. singer-songwriter, end of the 70s. And, I mean, I, I'm not aware of... Well, I do know one thing she said no to, and that's touring. 
she didn't tour at all from like I think the second album onwards. She just didn't like it for whatever reason. Not I her think thing. I think her, what she said was that she always felt that she wasn't bringing as much art, you know, production values, and like she didn't the vision wasn't there. Yeah, it was like a. You know, you know, we know what gigs are like. It's hard to bring your vision. To yeah, for sure. Especially, I mean, back then before video walls and back all the stuff even, we have now. Yeah, yeah. it's just so more, much more basic. Yeah, so she didn't play a single gig until that run she did um, 10 years ago in right. the uh, right. Hammersmith Apollo. Yeah. And then, of course, she's got all the power yeah. because it's, oh, my God, it's Kate Bush. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So she could bring as much production as she wanted and make it perfect for did her. Did you see that show? I didn't. No, My friends didn't did, either. and they thought it was amazing. But um, I mean, she said she when she said yes to Stranger Things. Yeah. And I heard her on Radio Four at Women's Hour talking about it. Yes, so did I. Yeah. One, it's amazing she was on Women's Hour because Kate uh -huh. Bush is notoriously no. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, but she was just sort of saying, "Yeah, I watched the show with my kids. Really liked it. Really chuffed. Yeah, it's gonna yeah, be really yeah. great." And yeah. you know, that's kind of like. I guess it was the a beautiful moment for her to say, like, "Yeah, totally, yes. yes I mean, no, yes. no problem at all." Sure. But we, we actually know quite a few bands which don't enjoy touring, mm. which is almost like an unspoken, you know, oh, you, you can't say that. Yeah. You're not allowed to yeah. say you don't enjoy touring, but lots sure. of people don't enjoy playing no, live. No. It's different. It's a different thing. And some people have grown to love it as well. Yeah, well, like us. Well, like yeah. me, I, I hated yeah, it in yeah. the beginning and now I absolutely love it. But we know some people that have to tour because you're supposed to and you don't see any other option. But the minute yeah. you get some power, you're like, nah, bollocks, I'm going to do a yeah. couple of big ones. Yeah, I'm yeah, not yeah. going to do the I'm not going to do the brutal boxing ring runs around mm. you know Europe. I'm going to do Paris, Brussels, Amsterdam, and London. Yeah, I'm going to go back home to my country house. And why not? I yeah. think I think that's great. I think a lot of the younger artists that I work with, I see them getting with a small B, but I see them getting bullied into doing things. Mm. Whether that's what you wear, what your materials like, what you should be doing every day, especially with social media, what you should be posting, how often you should be TikToking, this yeah, stuff, yeah. and the record companies now, you know, it's all about your TikTok numbers. And it's okay to say, I don't want to go on TikTok because it annoys me. Mm. But if you say that, your record company will be a bit like, oh, well, you see, we need we need bigger numbers from mm. you really on TikTok. And it's like, TikTok's going to go. Yeah, It'll yeah. disappear. It'll yeah. be like MySpace in 20 years. In It'll any case, like, who cares? it's more powerful if someone else is TikToking for you. You know, so if someone else picks up your song. And does puts, a stupid dance does to a it. stupid dance to it and that goes viral <laughs> that's the best publicity of all yeah because you're not trying yeah. as an artist i think these decisions are quite powerful and yeah. going back to the ben howard thing when i saw him play brixton that time and he didn't play any of the old material and 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 i was very much enamored with his courage to yeah. say no i'm not going to do that and no i don't want to do that and no i'm not going to gig there and you know no i'm going to do what i want and to witness that show, the night that I saw, you know, the audience were a little bit, I don't know, moody. Yeah. Because it was, the venue's is a big venue, Brixton yeah. Academy, and he's playing really introspective stuff, which now we're used to. So now if we saw Ben Howard at Brixton Academy, you'd expect that kind of super musical, yeah. really introspective moments, you know? Mm -hmm. And they were a bit moody, and, and, and there was a bit of a, there, it was a bit combative in there at times. And I kind of thought, you know, but the power of no, you, this yeah. is your decision, and, and it's really cool for you that you can go, well, this is what I wanted to do, so this is how I'm going to do it. So I suppose, like, by doing that, and by making all the decisions he's made since, he's carved a new fan base now. Yeah. And they're the people who... And you lose a lot of others. You lose, yeah. but you gain... Yeah, you gain yourself. You gain all, yeah. Like, uh, you know, at his height, he was a 10,000 cap sort of, you mm. know, bordering on stadium act. And it's through his own choices that now he's not a stadium act, mm -hmm. but he's probably a much happier act. Mm. And his music is a lot better. Like mm. you say, you know, with artists, mm. they do their first album and it's a, a, like Radiohead is the example you used. And then and they had a creep on it. And A&R must have said to the manager, sure. we need yeah. another 12 of those, or at least we need another three of those. And the rest of the album could be trash. We don't care. Just <laughs> give us three creeps and yeah, we're away. Yeah, yeah. And we'll break America. Yeah. Radiohead, into America. Although on the second album, it's fake plastic trees on the second album. Yes. Yeah, I mean, so uh, in a way, I'd prefer that as a single than creep in sure. a weird way because it's like, you know, a moment. I mean, yeah, it's a yeah, moment. Yeah. And fake plastic trees i think could easily live on the next record too yeah it's definitely for me like a track of a sign of things to come yeah 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 and um, i suppose the more scary no from a record comp company perspective was the kid a no that was when they probably all said great another okay computer and actually i think 
might be not not a good thing to say, but the most of the band were probably saying we need another OK computer as well. Yeah, possibly, possibly. Um, but you, th- you think you think Kid A was very Johnny Tom led and Nigel and just I like, think it we was, want to well, do some weird. Well, wasn't the, it offcuts? Wasn't it outtakes no, anyway? No, well, the cliche was that Tom kind of we they went into the studio with their usual kind of set up and tom said right you can put all that away we're oh we're not, not going to be a rock band we're anymore. not going to be a rock band yeah that's right you know and they were all like okay so that's that's a no that is a no yeah no we're not going to be us anymore but you know in, in its way that kind of steered them into what they are now which is this kind of all all the colors of the rainbow yeah you know um they can do whatever they want now they can play a set which has everything every sort of little aspect of their career well, i think a... i mean maybe we are fixating on radiohead a bit too maybe. much but i mean they're just a great example of pretty much everything that you should do right yes but i remember when i saw them do um that french that um rock on Seine, that paris festival i was there with samar and Beck was playing and Radiohead were playing. And they do this stage on either end, so you just have to turn around. Oh, yeah. And then you watch Beck and then Radiohead are setting up and you just turn around. Yeah. And they hadn't done, uh, they hadn't played any of their Creep, they hadn't played any Pablo Honey tracks, they hadn't played, you know, they hadn't played any old stuff for ages. Yeah. This was, must have been 2013 or 14. And But they came out and did a festival set of greatest hits. Right. And so it was like, oh, my God. That's creep. Oh my god, yeah, it's yeah, fake yeah. plastic trees. Oh my, and it was like Karma Police and all these bangers, which they'd said, No, we're not gonna play those because we're touring our current album. Yes. And it's this. As a fan, I just got a sense of oh, this band is completely at peace with themselves. Yeah. They know what we all want. We all want a festival set. Well, you know what? These songs are all right. Here's a festival set. <laughs> Everyone good? Okay, great. Yeah, and I yeah. felt really kind of ah, Radiohead have like broken their their yeah, no yeah, their yeah. no thing. Now it's more of a yes thing. But I guess they could have only got there by saying Yeah saying no in the first totally. place i mean there's a lot of tracks that we don't play live we have a lot we have arguments yeah. about it all the time we have um tracks that i don't want to play yeah so, and, and because i'm the singer i can exercise the power of no by simply shutting my mouth and that's the end of that <laughs> that's not getting sung so we're so not playing I just walk off you just carry on playing and yeah, i'm like yeah. Mm-mm, mm-mm, mm-mm. <laughs> yeah so I guess as a, I guess the lead singer can exercise the power of no quite brutally quite by brutally, saying, "Well, I'm just yeah. not going to sing it." So good luck with that. But um, but are there any songs that I mean? I think some of the songs that we don't play simply because there isn't time. You know, oh yeah, like there's, yeah, there's yeah. plenty of songs that I would love to play, but it's but there's only like I think maybe one or two that we're like absolutely we're not playing that. Because... But we don't play any songs from the first album at all. I I brought out pills for the solo sets, but but none others, none of the others. But you played biscuits quite recently. I played biscuits on, on the Reser- twenty on Reser- the Resurgam. So it's twenty seventeen, isn't it? Sure. Well, I mean, in my mind, that's re- that's re- that's, <laughs> that's really only because like, you've forgotten. Five yeah, years I mean, dude, happened, that's right? only because you've. Yeah, but I mean, in terms of that's only the tour before last. Yeah. In terms of us, oh, right? Man, I mean, really, I, I don't think of it. I mean, that that seems like an age it, away. Yeah, you yeah, know. Yeah. But um, so we didn't play any of that. There's a lot I don't play off that album because I just I don't because I, I think I'm 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 different now. Okay. And I can't inhabit those songs very well. Right. And even though I should, or, or even though there's a lot of people that would like me to play that track or this track off that album or off the second album, yeah. For whatever reason, I just don't feel uh, I don't feel good about it, so I'm not mm. going to do it. Yeah, right. Absolutely. Um, and we're quite democratic about that. You're very forgiving of like there are certain tracks that are, I hate that just like for whatever reason either I don't like it personally mm. now I've grown away from it or. Frankly, it's just so difficult to play that I'm like, I'd rather just not. Yeah, like honestly, it just does my fucking head. Yeah, like, so honestly, I don't yeah. do it. I'd love to like, put yeah. honesty back in. Yeah, the set. forget it. But it's it's like a chance. workout every night. Yeah, yeah it's one. a horror story. It just yeah. drives me mad. Um, so yeah. there's lots of reasons why. Lots of reasons why. And um, yeah, the audience definitely respond better when you're when you're happy with what you're doing. Yeah, I and mean, the thing is, true. what I'm thinking now, as we as we are thinking of, of of going out live again later this year, is that um when we do it when 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 one does a new album and one goes on tour, mm. you, you play a lot of tracks off that new album. Yeah. And only one or two might survive yeah. after that tour yeah, to go yeah, into yeah. the set for the next That's record or the true. festival set. And so if you don't play them live yeah. on that, this is here's our new album tour, they might never get played yeah, live. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, never and, know. Yeah, no, that, you're, that, you're that's duty bound, as annoying as it is. When, we're the same when we go to gigs as an audience. Yeah. Often we're the same as everybody else on earth. It's like, they, they're going to do a new one. They're boo! Yeah. <laughs> you know? so it's fucking horrible. Do you boo? Oh, do you boo the band? From behind my wife. So that's sounds like she's doing it. Boo! <laughs> um, no. Yeah. Um, yeah, true, man. It's, 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 a, it's a funny one. I remember seeing... 
Patrick Watson in Paris, uh, in Amsterdam before our gig, for the RCO gig, yeah. the night before, and I was waiting for him to play To Build a Home, his massive track, and um, he didn't play it. Yeah. Oh, really? And it came, it's, the, it's the one that's why we're all there. Yeah. And then uh, yeah. the, it comes with the encore, and I'm like, okay, saved it for the encore. Fair yeah, enough, cheap trick, is. love it, play it. And he didn't, and then he, mm. and he left the stage, and I felt like... Maybe he resents it. That's that often happens, yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's another reason to exercise the power of no. You write a song and then something happens within the realm of that song's being and you're just like, that's ruined it for me. I never want to sing it again, yeah. mm. even if it's a bloody brilliant song. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And there's definitely a, a, a toss up there, depending on what kind of artist you are, between you owe it to you have to just keep singing this one massive pop song that launched you. You have to do it. Yeah. If you don't do it, they're going to lynch you. Yeah. And being a different kind of artist where you can say no with and still survive them buying your tickets next time you ask them to. I mean, some artists love that. I worked with one artist years ago who's who's was like, you know, my ambition is to write massive hits, sell out stadiums, and just sing the hits, mm. and yeah. that's that's what I want to do. Yeah. And and I couldn't necessarily relate to that, but you know, in that case, he he wants to sing the same songs every night. He just yeah. wants to sing massive songs to hundreds of thousands of people, and it's going to be awesome. Mm. And you know, yeah, I respect that as well. It's the communal mm. experience as well. He he would want the feeling of having all those people singing those songs back at him. That's the yeah. kind of it's almost like a drug in a way. I yeah. mean, you look at that. You look at like Queen gigs. Oh yeah, and you're like, yeah. I mean, how could you not want to do that yeah. every night? Sure. So, um, famous knowers then. Do we know any famous knowers well, in the, the other, past? The others I've got down here, Pearl Jam. I'm sorry if these are all a bit meat and potatoes, these examples, but <laughs> Pearl Jam refused to make any videos at all after their debut album. Okay. Why they was just, that? They just, they just thought, I'm not doing this. It's just... Right. Playing, it's just like we're in thrall to MTV. Yeah, and at that point, oh, right. at that point, MTV was particularly awash with like his long, yeah. long-haired rockers. Exactly. So How they just thought, even... no, we're not yeah. doing that at all. We're just going to make music. We're just yeah. going to make music and play gigs. So I think they didn't play. I didn't think they made any videos until the next decade, kind of thing. Wow. Um, Did they didn't have to. They didn't have no. to. I mean, no, so the power of no had been attained to, by yeah. just being huge. And like you yeah. said, why would you spend half a million, you know, a hundred thousand dollars making a video when it's just going to melt into the MTV multiple? Yeah, yeah and you know, back then, then but back then it was unmonetized. It yeah, was yeah. marketing spend, right. yeah. and marketing spend meant that the label stood behind half of it. You stood behind <gasps> half of it, but there's Ouch. no way to recoup it. Right. Well, yeah, it's nice sure. for the label to put anything in, to yeah, be honest, yeah. but. It would mean that it's dead money. It's marketing spend. You might as well do a bit. You might as well have a bus with your face on it and drive it around. Right. Whereas now, actually, video making is actually part potentially of your Income revenue stream. streams. Yeah. Because yeah. if you're like Nicki Minaj and you spend a quarter of a million on a video and it has three billion streams, you've just made you know four hundred grand. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. it's kind of like I think it's one of the great things about streaming is that it's actually given artists a lot more power to do what they want. And now you can monetize almost everything you do. Mm. Whereas in the past, there was a lot of wastage, especially mm -hmm. when it came to videos. Wow. Yeah, for sure. I mean, that, that horrible, um, that brilliant film Dig with the Dandy Warhols. Yeah. Do you remember that they yeah. spent like 400 grand on that big kitsch video for one of their songs? Right. 400 grand. Just a and the guy was just like, we should never have done. We're never going to make this back. Yeah. Yeah. They're probably still paying for you it. You still have to yeah. shift. You have to literally. I remember you saying once to me, like, just think of it as like you know a pound a pound a go. So it's like that's you're going to have to sell four hundred thousand units just to get to zero. If, mm. if, if that if that's the option, yeah, yeah totally. Yeah. And, and that's if you're making a pound a record. That's a lot of units. That's yeah. a lot of units. Yeah, I mean, you don't make any per record until you recoup. Yeah. So actually, <laughs> you know, yeah, I don't. I mean, the the, the yeah. mechanics they are quite bewildering and and, and quite. Dull, but but maybe this is where the playing field of the internet has made things a little bit fairer for the guys who can't afford to spend the dosh. Because nowadays, and I think that you know, not to be mean, but the quality of what people are prepared to consider entertainment now on their phone has definitely like gone down. Well, it's got shorter as well. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's, yeah. I mean, uh, it's awesome that we all have a video and a, a video recorder and a phone and, yeah. a, and a camera in our pockets at all times. That is brilliant, and there have been some great examples of artists using that to save 400 yeah, grand yeah. and make yeah. amazing videos yeah. but like it's still the old adage still applies of like the best videos have the best ideas it's yeah, really that yeah. simple and an idea costs nothing and how you execute mm. you can spend you can budget but yeah yeah you know i saw um 
a, a load of videos the other day because I was researching videos for us, you know, what, what we're going to need next. And, and I was watching kind of ideas-based videos and, and they were probably really cheap. Yeah. It's just, this yeah. is a great idea. How you spend your money in the early days, you have no choice. But when you do get some, some power because you're successful, you do get a chance to say no to like ridiculous spends yeah. and there's a lot of spending in the biz in the music business that is unnecessary i don't know why it gets done mm -hmm. like a hundred grand on a video for example yeah. it's like you can make 10 videos for that it sometimes be a tax write-off mate yeah no, i suppose so cynical, yeah. cynical world view of mine mm -hmm. but, um, yeah yeah no, that's, uh, there's um a couple just a couple famous more other knowers yeah. um rem no touring at all on their two biggest records why is that time and automatic for people wow. uh, i think they just decided we just we're, we're enjoying making the records and right. touring gets in the way yes and it does we also want to do a kind of an acoustic folky album which was out of time and we can't see how that will translate to a big yeah massive stage yeah. so they just didn't tour those two albums and wow. didn't know that didn't didn't affect the sales at all but that was because they were already pretty big i mean they know. could have done smaller venues like they could uh, have done. but then there's all sorts of politics involved in doing smaller venues yeah, there is, yeah. we've it heard sends this, out the wrong know, message sends and out blah, the wrong blah, message blah, to yeah. festival promoters will think oh they're only yeah. playing yeah you know this venue and See, this um, is where our power of no might come in mm. because it's, we, we, we've been through that treadmill. Yeah. No, you've got to take this show so that it sends the right message to promoters. You need to go up and up and up and up and up and yes. up. And sometimes you don't. Well, we know it's, yeah. yeah. Our, our, our Dutch experience in Amsterdam has taught yeah, us that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely. You know, a, a 1500 cap Paradiso is better than a 4000 cap AFAS for our music yeah. and yeah. our band. Definitely. And so when they next go you should play AFAS live because you'll get a better booking at Down the Rabbit Hole. Well, we but played AFAS live and yeah. we weren't booked for Down the Rabbit Hole. Yeah. So the, the moral of the story is just do whatever you want. Yeah, 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 yeah exactly. Yeah, that's true. Follow your gut instinct on that one. That Definitely. is very true. Um, two more. Um, Bowie said no to a knighthood, a Bond theme and Doctor Who. Oh, go Bowie. Yeah, of course <laughs> yes. he did. He's a legend. Said no to yeah. a knighthood. Love yeah. that. Yeah. No to a Bond theme. No to a Bond theme, apparently. Yeah. Love that. Yeah, and he was asked to be in Doctor Who and he said no. No. no I mean, I, mean, I wouldn't no. necessarily agree I with that. I think he might as much. Yeah. Should, like, well, it depends on what they want him to do in it, really. Yeah, true. I know. Um, well, they want you to do that thing that you did in June with the with the with the prayer with the balls. Yeah. You're like that wasn't me. Oh. <laughs> that was someone else's hand. Yeah, so can't no, wait for that. Can't wait for that second June and then, movie. And then, <laughs> and then finally, um, the Cure. Uh, Robert Smith hated flying. He, he still does probably. Okay. Hated it so much, but he was going over to America for a big promo tour and a tour for one of their early 90s albums he said well i'm gonna go on the boat nice so he decided i'll yeah. go on the qe2 yeah he went over to america on the qe2 that's um, awesome took a couple it took five days or whatever it was i'd love to be on the qe2 it. in yeah. the early 90s on a cruise and walk oh. around the corner and there's robert, robert smith, smith in the full gear and i've just thought of another one of course the beatles yeah. They they said of we're course, not touring, no to touring. anymore. No yeah. more touring because no to it's rubbish. I mean, I think I think we can all relate to that. That mm. their touring was pre pre in ears, pre monitors. Mm. Yeah, um, Shea Stadium is too big. Stop. I mean, look, yeah. look, come on. You also, know, you'd, yeah. you'd, any band with any production value would struggle in that place. Uh -huh. No PA. Yeah. yeah, I mean, hard. I mean, dude, ninety I mean, ninety percent of bands, besides which, after decades of touring, you know. I just don't, don't want him anymore. Yeah, but the Beatles had only hard. been on tour for like, I don't know, six years. Yeah, so but they've mean, grown bigger than... Yeah, bigger than touring itself. Bigger than, bigger the, than the sound Yeah, system. I mean, yeah, Elvis yeah, never toured outside allowed. the state. Sure. I didn't suppose. He? Did he really not? He didn't play in Britain. No, never didn't. played in the UK. Stopped yeah. an Air Force base here in once, Scotland. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. That's right. They yeah. still talk about uh, it. But that's because his manager, oh, there's all these conspiracy theories about it. But also, you know, they were like, do you want to play Vegas every night? It's, a, it's much bit easier. Yeah. And you get paid a load more. And the world yeah. can come to you. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's exactly it. Right. En suite burger bar. <laughs> yeah, but, um, yeah, I mean, the power of no, it's important to develop it so yeah. that you can protect yourself from doing things that mm. you think aren't you and yeah. don't represent you and and and, and the, even though that being you and representing you is a work in progress always yeah. and, a, and a flow and it'd be obvious when something is I can't possibly say no Super Bowl halftime show is a, mm -hmm. you know you don't say no but um I don't know where young young artists should draw the line I, I'm like if if it's in the early days I was like I'll say yes to everything and now I'll just say yes now I say yes to almost everything, as long as it's relevant. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I don't want to just provide free content for media outlets. 
because that's all I'm doing anyway. I mean, even this podcast, in some respect, yeah. is doing exactly that. Yeah, it's like I already give so much content to massive media conglomerates for nothing. Yeah, for no financial benefit for myself, just ego. So maybe I don't need to provide your radio station with free mm, content because mm. they'll own the session for the next 25 years mm. or something. Yeah. You know, so get well, a power of no, it's important. On that note, I refuse to continue this episode. So do I. I'm going gonna, gonna to use the power of no by saying no. No. Guys, I've had enough. Brilliant. Brilliant. Bye. Bye. Bye.